Yes, he's done the right thing for himself, for the country, for the NHS. Of course, he shouldn't have come to this. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, should have shown the guts, the spine, the judgment to have sacked him. You cannot have a health secretary breaking the rules in a pandemic when you need people to follow the rules. And I think this reveals the weakness, lack of judgment, lack of leadership from Boris Johnson that he didn't sack him. And if number 10 are briefing tonight that this was Matt Hancock's decision, not Boris Johnson, I think that tells you even more so that Boris Johnson isn't cut out for the demands of leadership. Is it fair to knock a man when he's down? Here he is, just left his post. I'm not knocking uh, Matt Hancock. As it happens, it's a personal tragedy for Matt. And I, I, I do send him my very best wishes. He's always been personally courteous to me in all of our dealings, very grown-up dealings, as you'd expect, uh, in a pandemic like this. But to be frank, it's not just the last 24 hours which call into question Matt Hancock's abilities as the health secretary. He, Over these last 15 months, he failed to protect our care homes. He sent our NHS staff to the front line in the face of a ferocious deadly virus without the PPE that they needed. Contact tracing has been a shambles. People still aren't paid money to isolate. And we've got the virus getting out of control again because of the Delta variant, which came to our shores because of failures to put to secure our borders. So, so there's been a litany of errors, 15 months of missteps from Mr Hancock. But really, this is about Boris Johnson tonight. And why did he not take action when it was so obvious that he needed to? Could you argue that Matt Hancock has tried his best during the pandemic? Here we are with something that was unheard of. We don't know how to deal with I mean, Would you have done any better if you were in uh, government? Well, in some ways, he was dealt a, a difficult hand because he inherited a National Health Service with 100,000 vacancies, uh, short of 40,000 nurses, an NHS which had lost 15,000 beds, where an NHS and a social care sector which had suffered from deep oh, cutbacks. That tweet from Tim Shipman. I haven't seen the tweet from Tim Shipman. No, uh, I, well, he has tweeted to uh, say about Gina Colodangelo's leaving her position on the board of the Department of Health. We will be checking that out for now. But, uh, Jonathan Ashworth, you insist that this comes down on Boris Johnson. Yet, we know uh, things have... You've tried to uh, put things on him before, haven't you? Look at this uh, Downing Street refurbishment. That didn't help in the polls, did it? Oh, look, I don't, I don't make interventions based on the opinion polls. I make, a, I make my public assertions on what, on based on what is the correct, right and proper thing to do. And when it comes to the mishandling of the pandemic, it's obvious that Matt Hancock sadly fa failed. But he also failed because he's been part of a government which has subjected our healthcare services to 10, 11 years of cutbacks. We'd lost 15,000 beds. We were short of 40,000 nurses. There's been elements of the NHS which have been outsourced, privatised, if you like. So the foundations were weakened going into this pandemic. We shouldn't have been in that situation. And that is because of the policies that Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson not only supported, but have ferociously championed over 10 years of Tory government. But overall, Matt Hancock has done the right thing for the country tonight, but it should have been Boris Johnson who showed leadership uh, on Friday when this story broke. Of course, the uh, position now is vacant. Uh, there are going to be a number of key challenges for whoever takes over. Who, who might take over? Any idea? Well, I'd like to take over. I mean, I want to be the health secretary. Well, that's not going to happen yet, is it, no, it's unfortunately not, it's not for you? Not yet, not yet. Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, who knows? But the challenge for whoever takes over is how you deal with the waiting lists, which are now at record levels, over 5 million people waiting for treatment uh, how do you deal with the cancer waiting list, which have got longer, where people's uh, life-saving treatments have been delayed and cancelled? How do you deal with the mental health crisis, where young people are struggling to access mental health care? I mean, our waiting lists are so large, you can see them from out of space now. That's the challenge, whoever the new health secretary is, to del deliver the quality care that patients deserve and have been denied. And will Labour give its unequivocal support to whoever occupies this role? No, we'll, we'll hold the uh, new health secretary to account and we'll be asking them, how are you going to drive down waiting lists now at 5 million for the over 2,000 people waiting over two years for treatment? Imagine that, waiting over two years for treatment in pain and anxiety. When are those people going to get their operation? 
And for the, the hundreds of thousands of people waiting over a year, when are they going to get their treatment or operation? These are the things I'm going to be asking the new health secretary, and they'll need to convince me that they've got a plan backed up by the money and with a plan to recruit the staff to deliver that quality care, which too many people are being denied at the moment. Of course, we were supposed to be talking about so-called Freedom Day on the 21st this week, yet we're talking about Matt Hancock, aren't we? Uh, now, do you think that what uh, his breach of the, certainly the guidance, uh, will affect people in that they think, oh, they don't need to follow them? Well, I mean, I hope not, and that's why it's such a difficult situation, this. If he had, had stayed in place, lots of people would have said, well, why should I follow those rules? It's why he had to go. But we have all got to follow the guidance and we've got to get the, the jabs, get the vaccination. If you've been offered a vaccination, please take it, because that ultimately is how we get our freedoms back and how we save lives. What do you think this does do to Boris Johnson's credibility now then? The fact that he gave him his uh, support yesterday lunchtime and, and now the health secretary has gone and, and the health secretary looks like he has resigned rather than uh, being sacked. Well, it just shows you that Boris Johnson has failed the test of leadership. He should have sacked him. And the fact that even tonight they're saying that uh, Mr Hancock decided to resign rather than uh, Boris Johnson asked him to leave his post just shows you that Boris Johnson has, again, as I say, failed the test of leadership and is and he's now exposed as utterly lacking in any judgment. Um he has been fairly effective. I mean, there's a lot of failures that you seem to lay at Matt Hancock's, Matt Hancock's door. But look at uh, the vaccine, the vaccines, the vaccination programme. That's under his watch. Well, vaccination has gone well because of the way in which primary care and our nurses and the volunteers on the ground have been able to deliver it. But there's so much that's gone badly wrong. I mean, infection rates are rising again because the Delta variant was allowed to reach these shores because our borders are left as secure as a sieve. And people are still not able to isolate properly because they've not been paid proper sick pay. So there's been huge failures throughout the last 50 months. I think the most, the most serious of which is the failure to protect care homes. Um, I just want your reaction. We firm this up now. Uh, Gina Colodangelo is leaving her position on the board of the uh, Department of Health Executive Director. Your, your reaction to that? Well, that's the right thing to do. But nobody quite understands why she was appointed or what the process was, although there's been lots of innuendo about that, uh, uh, obviously, because of the events of recent days. Look, her appointment was murky. It was lacking in transparency. Uh, those are posts... The people who do those jobs are supposed to hold the ministers to account in the department. I think uh, it's right that she's resigned. She shouldn't have been appointed in the first place.